We'll start with the most complicated one. That's called the angle at which two edges meet is called the dihedral angles. It's a very complicated word here. So I, I imagine it if for some reason I'm a bug on vacation and I'm traveling around here on the top pentagon and I decide that I'm going to go skiing, I'm going to go off one of the edges. It doesn't matter which edge I would go off, it would be equally steep. Does that kind of make sense? If I take the cube and I push in the points, and you've done this with clay, which is a wonderful exercise that everybody should do. If I push in the points, then at first I get small little triangles that emerge. Right? So automatically this isn't a platonic solid, for instance, because the faces are no longer all the same, are they? Just imagine the square shrinking down to points. We get finally what's a very important shape, and another platonic solid, which is the octahedron. How could we find a way of creating Archimedean solids? Well, what we're gonna do to begin with is we're going to start by doing the reverse process of pushing in the points. Every place that there was a square face here is replaced by four triangles. Are all these triangles equilateral? Are they? Indeed, they're not, right? They're not at all equilateral. Are they all the same? Are all the faces the same on this? Yeah, every single face is this triangle. It's not, it's isosceles, but it's not equilateral. And all I've done is taken this and I've just had the pyramids grow a little bit further. In the meantime, the edges from the cube have disappeared. What happens if I expand this, actually? If I explode this out? I think I kind of, what did I do? Yes, I do get this, I think. Did I get that right? That's very unexpected. Am I correct? Every edge, there are six edges, is going to become a square. I start with three, I start with four triangles and every point's gonna give me four more triangles. I do get this. Which one do you think I'm gonna ex explode now? The pink one. Yes. To me, pink is the most important, always. And this is the dodecahedron, which I think in many ways is the most spectacular form. And, and the ancient Greeks believed so too. There was something special about this. This represented, if we actually go back and we look at Plato's view of the elements and the four elements, the four elements being earth, air, water, and fire. He connected it to all of these. This represented earth. This represented fire. This represented air. And the icosahedron represented water.